The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Welcome to my show. Today's special guest is Don Wharton, singer, songwriter, storyteller, author, and a keynote speaker. If there's anything I miss, I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's, that's pretty much covers it, yeah. As, also husband, father, and grandfather. Oh, getting there. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> How many kids? Uh, we have five children. Yeah, and uh, we have four grandchildren and uh, two on the way. There's uh, uh, one going to be born the end of October, one the end of November. So, boy, have you got a large family? There's a there's a good group. Yeah, yeah. wait until Christmas. Mm -hmm. Anyways, where were you born and raised? Uh, here in Fort Wayne. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was born at the old Lutheran Hospital down on Fairfield. Oh my stars. Yeah. And uh, while you were growing up, who had influenced you uh, the most? Well, I had uh, several. My dad uh, was a big influence. Uh, he was a very common man, and uh, he had served in the military. And uh, he'd also, uh, uh, he, he was very sick. He died when he was 40. Mm -hmm. And I was 11 when he died. And he, um, uh, it just very influential on me. So, um, and my mom got married again a year later, mm -hmm. and my stepdad, uh, I took his last name, Len Wharton, mm -hmm. was his name, and uh, Lenny was, uh, they, they were totally different, opposite kind of people. My stepdad uh, was a hockey player, he played for the Comets. Holy and, uh, Yeah, the first two years the Comets were there. And uh, so he was, he was, uh, he was quite a guy. He was very uh, was? well loved and everything. So, uh, but he's since passed away. My mom's oh. passed away too. Oh, so, no, yeah, it's, just... it's a shame. They were, they were all good people. So, what a mixture. Yep. And you were brought up proper, because I can tell. Proper. Proper. Yeah. Well, I guess so. <laughs> you brought up Christian. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I went to Lutheran school. Mm -hmm. And I was baptized down at uh, Trinity on St. Mary's in Fort Wayne. Went to Lutheran school at Bethlehem. And then when my dad died, uh, my mom got married a year later, like I said. I, w I went to Bethlehem through sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we moved to New Haven. And I went to Central Lutheran there. And then New Haven High School. And graduated from there. So, Do you notice the difference between Lutheran uh, schools and public schools? Um, Back then, not as much. Uh, I think nowadays you probably yeah you probably have a little bit more of a difference. But uh, back then, uh, in fact, uh, I was one of the a group of guys who started the first uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, organization at our high school. Uh, we had seen an ad in a in a, a program or something and sent away for information. We had people come visit us and oh. ended up going to uh, summer camp, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's where I got a lot of influence there. Uh, in my life through Fellowship of Christian Athletes, especially there was a guy named Ray Hildebrand who was a singer and a songwriter and I kind of gravitated towards him and uh, Ray wrote the song uh, Hey Paula back in the 60s hey, and he hey, right and he was in the group Paul and Paula he was Paul of Paul and Paula. Oh really? Paul was actually Ray and Jill uh, was actually Jill Paula. was Paula yeah oh, wow. but uh, they, uh, I listened to him so much, and uh, he was a big influence. Taught me a lot about being in front of people, and uh, not uh, scared like, anybody now. Are uh, you? Not, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not scared when you get on. Uh, okay, where did you go to school again? Uh, well, I ended up going to college then in Michigan at Concordia uh, Junior College, mm -hmm. uh, Lutheran Junior College, and then I went to Eastern Michigan University, and I got a bachelor's from there. Uh, in what? Um, 
I, I, wanted to, I wanted to teach in high school and coach, so I had a minor in phys ed and I had a major in industrial education, because mm. at that time that was a big subject uh, for uh, teachers uh, in the public schools especially. Uh, they, they were uh, just clamoring for uh, industrial arts teachers, especially teaching about industry and being in Michigan, that was, that was a big deal, was, the, uh, was the, all the industry. But I ended up, uh, I, my first job was teaching phys ed, at uh, back at Concordia, mm. uh, I went back there and taught for three years before I went into music. Oh, music! Yeah. How old were you when you became interested in being a musician, singer? Well, I I started playing the piano in second grade. Oh. And uh, so I played. I took lessons from like seventh, sixth, seventh grade, second grade through about eighth grade. And then I kind of taught myself. I played in bands and and uh, I could read music by then. So uh, I played in the church and uh, did some little concerts and everything here and there. But uh, I couldn't sing. Uh, that was the unusual thing. You know, I couldn't sing when I was a kid. I, I had one of those voices. I was change first. Well, I was I sang real loud and real bad and. Uh, then when my voice changed, it was real loud and real bad and real low. <laughs> so they said, just uh, kind of move your lips down. But when I got to high school, I found out that I had trouble with my ears and my nose and my sinuses, and I couldn't hear very well. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, when that all cleared up, then I could hear the notes, and then I started being able to sing a little bit better. But uh, cool. music was a big deal, especially in college. You know, I, that's when I started playing the guitar. Uh, was in college because it was in the 70s and everybody oh, everybody played the guitar oh, yeah. you know so uh, we had to uh, back then so um, you were when did you actually become what age a singer well uh, professionally uh, I started in 1979 mm. um, uh, full time in music but I had done it for a good 10 years before that mm -hmm. just part time uh, doing things, but my wife and I made that jump in 1979. Went full time, mm -hmm. and promptly got ourselves uh, behind the eight ball uh, financially, uh -oh. until we realized how to do this thing. And uh, business and singing, singing, yeah, yeah. Because we we didn't uh, well. Uh, it's it's not that easy to make a living in the music business, oh, and you really have to have some mentors. You have to have people that know what they're doing, and so you you just um, you you, um, you learn as you grow. And fortunately, we got uh, we got the right kind of path, and we got a lot of uh, some good people behind us, mm -hmm. and uh, that really helped. So that does help people surrounding you, helping you. Oh. Out. Yeah. Do you collaborate with people? I, I, I don't do a, a whole lot of collaborating as far as writing. I did some when we lived in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, Nashville. Yeah, we lived there 1990 to 2006, 16 years. You we were there. around. Oh, that was, the, that was the glory times, too. That was big Garth Brooks, uh, Clint oh, Black, uh, Randy Travis, all those things. And uh, that, that was a good time to be in Nashville. There was a lot of good things going on. And I worked with a publisher named Niles Borop. Uh, who uh, was a very prolific songwriter and also a great teacher. And uh, he taught me an awful lot about songwriting, especially writing for other people. He set me up with some other partners to write with. And uh, so I also wrote with him uh, a song or two. And um, that, was, that was a good time for him. But I mostly wrote for my own self and the songs that I was thinking of so and recording at the time too. You do your composing your own music melody? Oh yeah, yeah, words and music, yeah. So uh, over the years how many CDs have you recorded? Well I've done about 20 and mm -hmm. uh, that's it, it just whenever we finished uh, one and we got a, uh, some more money together we just decided hey let's uh, uh, let's you know let's go ahead and, and make another album so. Uh, All right. Yeah. So so yeah. yeah, brought you a couple of this is uh, well this is one I this is a very popular one that I've had. It's called Count It All Joy. That's a picture of my younger brother right there. Yeah, that's <laughs> sort beautiful. Of, that's me. But uh, no, that's and then uh, this Finding the Way was a nice album to do. It was it was a lot of uh, a lot of people. Um, I, I called in a few favors to do this thing and kind of went back and forth from Fort Wayne down there mm. to uh, finish this album and then went to. Uh, Sweetwater Sound here in Fort Wayne and did the vocals. Cool. Yeah, did the vocals there. So now this one I did all at Sweetwater and it's called Abundantly 
And you can see there's a picture of me in front of the Great Wall of China. Oh, I And see. my wife and I got a chance to go there, and I sang for um, a 10-year uh, anniversary of the Concordia International School in Shanghai. Wow. And uh, so we took some tours, and, and we got to go to, to the wall. That was great. Did you and go then, back now? What's that? Would you go back to China now? Not, not now. I don't need to no, anymore. I, the language barrier was really tough. Mm -hmm. But we had, um, uh, we had a wonderful time and met some wonderful people uh, yeah. along the way. And then I, I put together a testimony CD, uh, it's called Rescued by the Grace of God. This is about our plane crash. What happened? Well, we went to Russia, um, and it, actually on the front you can see a little map. There's a, a little town called La Varentia, which we did. Uh, we flew first up to Nome, Alaska, uh, up here, and then went over the strait. First we went to Providenia to get uh, our passport stamped there, and then we flew to La Varentia, and we spent about a week there uh, ministering with some of the missionaries who were oh. finally over there. And we had a wonderful time, um, but then on the way back home we had to go back to Providenia, and then we went towards St. Lawrence Island, and then we went towards Nome, and on the way into Nome, uh, flying out over the Bering Sea, uh, we lost both engines. Oh, shoot. Uh, one, one of them about 40 miles from Nome, the other one about 27 miles. And we had to ditch into the uh, into the ocean, oh, and we hit the water at about 90 miles an hour and oh. three to six foot waves, and uh, it was a jolt. Oh. And um, uh, we had to get out of the plane then because the plane sank about a minute later. Oh my! So we floated. Uh, the only flotation devices we had were some empty five gallon gas cans, and we had no raft, we had no uh, life jackets, but we floated with these cans and waited and we were in the water um, anywhere from 35 minutes to 70 minutes. Wow. The water was near freezing oh. and they estimated at the at, when we got rescued that uh, we should have only lasted about 8 to 13 minutes in water that cold. Well, God is with him. <laughs> Absolutely. He and we knew that day we were either going to see him personally or we were, going to, we were going to see his handiwork. And fortunately we got a chance to see his handiwork. Yeah, he wasn't through with you yet? Did no, not yet. Did everybody survive? All seven of us survived and uh, it was on August 13th, 1993. Oh, it was cold? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. The Bering Sea freezes oh, over oh. solid during the winter. Oh, right. And uh, you can actually walk from Alaska to Russia uh, if you could stand the 40 degree below temperatures. But the water freezes there, but it thaws out during the summer. Mm. But it only gets up to maybe 40 degrees at most. The Do you water still temperature. go in planes? You're not afraid to be um, on I I don't need to much anymore. I drive most everywhere I go. Oh, must have been Even when we'd go to the coast or something, we'd always uh, we'd still drive. So yeah. So uh, you have how many? I've, I've done about 20 CDs over the years and, yeah, and record albums. Record I used to, albums? Yeah, started with record LP? albums in 79. Oh, yeah. Ooh, the, yeah. I always tell kids today, I said, those are big black CDs. And because yeah, uh, what they are, the record albums. Yeah, there you go. And you can, uh, uh, but they're, uh, they're, they're made out of polyvinyl chloride, which is a, a petroleum oh. product. So I said, if you ever get in real desperate needs, you can always melt that down, make gasoline out of it if you want to. You know, you could, you know, refine it, I guess. So, who picked you up when you were being rescued? Uh, there were volunteers, actually. There was uh, one from uh, an Evergreen helicopter that volunteered to come out. They had one of the firefighters on board. Wow. Uh, he was wearing a, a, a thermal suit and uh, stood on the skid, and they, they went up and down with the waves, and uh, it was pretty impossible to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, this pilot uh, was an old uh, Vietnam pilot, and he was a pretty tough cookie, uh, let me tell you. But he did it, and he knew uh, how to fly. Yep, he and the other pilot. There was a second helicopter that came out and rescued one of us too, mm -hmm. and uh, they both got uh, awards from the National Transportation Safety Board, the highest uh, civilian award they can give. So and, they uh, picked you up. And... They picked oh. us. They picked us up, and then they, sh they shipped us off to an island. It's called Sledge Island. It's a air hazard coming into Nome. It's uh, 760 feet above the ocean. It's kind of a wow. flat top island. Oh, and they, they took us to there because they couldn't take us all the way into Nome first. If they had taken a, the first group into Nome and then come back and got us, we'd have probably died in that process. But instead they took us to Sledge Island, came back, ferried us back there until they got all of us up there. Right. And then got the two, two helicopters, put us in there and then flew us to Nome. And then there were volunteers uh, from the, the whole town. The whole town knew about it oh. at this point. 
and they all rushed to the helicopters and helped us get into the ambulances and the rescue truck and took us to the Nome, uh, Norton Sound Hospital in Nome. And then they warmed us up best they could. Um, my temperature dropped below uh, oh, 92 oh, degrees. Oh my. And two of the people that dropped below 90, and that's usually fatal, but they, they all survived too. God and, knows. Oh yeah, yeah. It was, it was definitely a God thing. In fact, a lot of people mentioned that too after after the whole experience. They said, uh, well, somebody must have been looking out for you, or you must have had divine intervention. And, Just said God. Yeah, we got, we got a chance to be able to tell them that. Well, oh. let me tell you, there's a God, capital G start. on that God, and we know who he is, and uh, you know, so it was, it was the best experience of my life it was the worst experience too, so. But it's given me a great story to tell mm -hmm. about God's grace. We were helpless to save ourselves and in need of the rescuer. And that's the way all of us are. You know? Do you tour talking about this? Uh, I have. You know, I have uh, for 40 years. Well, since 1993, uh, I toured and, and did most of the time. That, that was a big part of the message uh, that I shared with people was the plane crash. And I did a lot of school assemblies, and that was always good at schools because uh, the kids really related to that. And they could, uh, uh, you know, you kind of just tell the story, and the story uh, spoke to these kids. So, Did yeah. uh, COVID stop you? Um, no, I, I yeah. actually stopped just before COVID. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah. I, had, um, I did my last tour in March of 2020, mm -hmm. and where we booked, you know, uh, three weeks and four weeks on the road. Um, we had just come back from Florida. In fact, March 15th, I think, we had done our last thing in Warner Robins, Georgia, and then we drove that, that morning, or that after church there, we drove to, um, to Bowling Green, Kentucky to uh, see our daughter there, who lived there. And uh, we were going to stay a second night, but they were starting to close everything down at that point. So we decided to go back home, and uh, so it was just the timing was right. Uh, I had stopped touring uh, at that point and retired oh. uh, from, uh, from uh, you know, being on the road. And uh, I've been on the road for 40 years, huh? so I you mean. Started uh, one year too. You said. Oh yeah, that. right. Yeah. All right, no, all right. No, the last uh, uh, last five vans I had went over uh, 1.4 million miles. Is that all? Uh, yeah, right. the The average is about 300,000 cool. uh, per van. The one I have now has 260,000 on it. Oh, is that all? And it's it's really running well still. I, I don't think I'd like to travel across country with it anymore. But uh, you don't but want to go on the road again. On the road again. Yeah. We <laughs> did that for a lot of years. You got books here, Mom. Yeah, I also did a I did a video here several years ago. Um, it's called Life of the Back Fence, oh, yeah. and it's um, it's a two man drama, and it's about uh, these. It's based on a true story of uh, two friends of mine who uh, were back fence uh, friends, and they they used to be beer drinking buddies, and then one of them became a Christian. Oh yeah. And so then the other one uh, wasn't so sure about it, and they had some uh, some back and forth on yeah. that. They ended up both becoming Christians, Which and uh, they're both they're, you know both friends today still. So so we did this little thing here in Fort Wayne, and um, it's been been a lot of fun to put out. So. And then uh, I started writing books uh, after the plane crash. You I wrote an author. Well, yeah, I got I got a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> I wrote uh, I wrote my first novel. <laughs> it was it, it was it was about um, uh, an experience I had, and I just kind of expanded it. Where would you go with this story? And the uh, uh, it it worked out really well. I, I wrote this book, and then I, I thought of a second one mm -hmm. to write with it too. And uh, then the, came the third one, and then the fourth, and the fifth. How many do you have again? Well, in this series, there's seven books, and wow. I'm, that's the one I'm working on now. It's the seventh one. It's not a trilogy, no way. No, no, no. It's a seventy or seventy <laughs> seventy or whatever <laughs> that is. Um, what do you got there? But then, well, so that's that's uh, that's the first one in the series. It's called Conviction, Conviction. and uh, it's about this one character, and he's 25 in this novel. Then the second one in the series, he's 40. The third one, he's 55. And then, spoiler alert, he dies in the in the third one oh. uh, at 55. Mm. But then the fourth one is about his wife and how she responds to that. Ah. And then the fifth one is about their son who grows up and becomes a pastor of a so small church in Ohio. So watching a movie. Yeah, it just keeps going and going. Well, then then I went uh, I went back like Star Wars, uh, you know, in the in in their their storytelling. 
uh, I went back in time to the sixth book is the day that the main character was born. Mm. And it's more about his grandfather and grandmother and uh, growing up. And then um, it takes him until he's about 12 years old. And the one I'm writing now takes him from 12 to 25. And that's where this book starts. Oh. So it's it's called The Legacy Circle. It's a circle. And it's uh, seven books are going to be in the series. I'll have a seventh one done hopefully by Christmas. And uh, it's uh, it's uh, been a lot of fun to put this whole story together. And then along the way then I've had others that I, I wanted to do a couple of stories. These are two novellas. They're sh shorter stories. Yeah. Um, just this one's called uh, "The Things Do Too." It's a sequel to the uh, Tom Hanks movie "That Thing You Do," and uh, it's a music a movie about a one one hit wonder band. One hit and, wonder. Uh, <laughs> and then the the other one's called "The Literary Fever of Pleasant Valley, Virginia," and it's just a, a story about a little town that's in a valley in the mountains in Virginia, and they don't get television reception. But there was a uh, librarian who was a juggernaut of literary in enthusiasm, and she got all the kids to read. And so this town reads books. And so they don't have really much television and uh, all of that, but they, they read books and they talk about things and truth and beauty, and they have a literary contest. And it's, it's kind of an interesting story about uh, uh, some of the characters in that town. I had a great time putting that together. So. Now, this 2045, ah, that's in this the future, is, right? Well, this is, I wrote this after the last presidential election, and I saw some things that were happening, and I, and I questioned some of the things that people were doing, and I said, what if we continue on this path? Where, will we uh, where are we going to be? Where is the world going to be? Where is the country going to be? Where is the church going to be in 2045? That's not too far away. And where are we going to be? And so I said, I, I want to try and uh, just write. It's not a 1984. It's not morbid. Oh. It's a it's a novel, and it's a Christian novel, mm -hmm. and it's uh, based on the one one character who's a soldier, who's a Marine, mm -hmm. and he's based uh, down in the southern part of the United States. And I just I went I got bold and I and I went kind of out on a ledge on a on a few things on this. But the um, it's based into three parts: uh, the cause the plan and the battle and it's uh, it's a it's a search for the truth and I think that's what's lacking nowadays in a lot of um, the way we communicate is the truth we need to know what is the real truth the whole truth and uh, what is God's truth in this whole thing so it's a search for that and and it hopefully will encourage people to do that yeah. today to be able to stand up that, is that uh, are these all in the stores? Uh, no, actually, you can get them from my website, though. Okay, what's it's your website? DonWharton.com. How do you spell it? D-O-N-W-H-A-R-T-O-N.com. And it uh, took me three days to come up with that oh, one, you know. So, so uh, that's that's the latest book that I have. And the, like I say, this seventh book in this series will be out, hopefully at Christmas time. Okay. What is the company Down Home America? Down Home America was was a um, originally a radio show mm -hmm. that I wanted to do, and uh, it was sort of like a Garrison Keillor type show, and we test marketed it, and uh, it it uh, didn't go over as well as I wanted it to, but uh, people said, well, I'd rather hear you sing more, yeah. and, but it was a lot of stories and and songs and. And it was basically encouraged people to, to get back down home. Well, getting uh, back down home, man. Uh, that's you right. You got a song for us, kiddo? Well, I can sing you one, sure. Yeah. Oh, certainly. Um, let's see here. Are we tuned? What are we singing? This is called uh, uh, Someone's Got to Show Us the Way. Columbus stared across the ocean blue. A feat that everyone thought no one could do. Took him six months to establish the route, but the Concord flew it in an hour or two. But someone's got to show us the way. Someone's got to show us the way. Someone's got to show us the better way. Someone's got to show us the way. Pony Express rider blazed up a trail 
Through the rain and the snow and the sleet and the hail. Gotta get the news to the west without fail. Oh, excuse me while I check my electronic mail. But someone's got to show us the way. Someone's got to show us the way. Someone's got to show us the better way. Someone's got to show us the way. Neanderthals scribbling on a dark cave wall. Now there's masterpieces hanging in a museum hall. Edison's working by candle in the night, trying to bring the world a little bit of light. Cain killed Abel in a fit of rage. The patterns continue to this modern age. Now the six o'clock news lists the murders today. Is anybody working on a cure for hate? Cause someone's got to show us the way. Someone's got to show us the way. Someone's got to show us the better way. Someone's got to show us the way. Someone's got to show us the way. You, you know, it's the Lord that's showing you the way. Absolutely. That exact moment. That's what he does. Say. Yeah. Wow. And this, the way this, hmm, the way this world is going, we could use him. We Absolutely. Could, we need him more today than we ever have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're right. What would you like to say to my audience? It's towards the end of the show now. Well, just continue um, just drawing close to the Lord. And uh, that's, uh, you know, do what you can to do that. Uh, the world is going to try and pull us away. Mm -hmm. But uh, our pastor is doing a sermon right now on delighting in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Well, we need, we need to uh, delight in Him. We spend a lot of time on our phones. Uh, we spend a lot of time in front of the TV. <laughs> And we need, we need to uh, delight in the Lord and get to know Him, read yes. His Word, fellowship with other believers, uh, be able to share with other people. Witness. Uh, there's all, yeah, absolutely. There's all kinds of things that we can get involved with. And, um, and we need to do that. The Lord is still, He's going to lead us and guide us. And, and make no mistake about it, He is in control. He's the only one. He's the only one that's in control. The rest of this, uh, people, <laughs> it's... The, the world may think it's in control, but it's not. It's not. He's out of control. It is. Satan. Well, but the God is in control. He always has been, always will be. Always will be. You this be. is Patty Hunter, Patty's Page. And my special guest was Don Larkin. Thank you, Patty. Oh, we got a good grip. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much for joining in with us, and we'll see you next week. Always